Hello there. So I've been avoiding making this video for a few months now. I've got this document on my computer called um, Existential Crisis that I created about six months ago. And um, it's a tongue-in-cheek title, but um, I wanted to share some thoughts on my current life situation. So um, join me for what we'll call the Existential Deep Dive. So I've been travelling on and off now for the past few years and um, now I'm home. I've given some thought to the question what, what now, what next? Um, but to do that I want to give a bit more context into my life so far but I'll keep this bit quite brief because I had a pretty stable childhood. Um, my parents never really forced me to do anything. I had no beliefs or opinions foisted upon me. I was left lar largely to my own devices and um, I got through my childhood without really major trauma or incident. Um, at school and university I learned to pass exams quite easily. Um, and after university, I taught English for a year in China where I met my future wife. And um, she joined me in England a few years later. And um, I was working as a management consultant at that point, carrying on my mindset of doing the bare minimum for maximum reward and um, just going through the motions at work. Really, I couldn't care less about the about the content um, and after four years of doing that I felt like I'd had enough um, Bruno come here go to bed in your bed Bruno up Um, so yeah, after four years of that, I'd reached my end, um, and I decided to quit and start a mobile food business, which was the first real conscious decision I'd made, I feel, up until that point in my life, to take control. And, um, I experienced some very scary um, and tough times running my own business, but after about 18 months... I was making decent money and um, I had a loyal customer base in the local area. I still felt like I was trapped though, working kind of 12 hours a day, more than that, 16 hours a day sometimes, five days a week, just repetitive, repetitive, repetitive days, tasks over and over again. It was hard work and I just felt trapped, like how was I, am I going to do this forever? Um, I didn't even have enough time to do anything else, really. Um, and by this time, we'd bought a nice two-bedroom house in Surrey. I had two cats, and um, things were going okay. But um, in March 2019, um, during a trip to Slovenia, my wife said she wasn't fulfilled by the relationship, um, which was a shock for me because I felt, it felt like a normal 10 year relationship, it felt okay, but maybe that was because I had kind of fixed the relationship to what, what my ideals were. But um, after a few months we got divorced and after that I just, we sold the house, we got about 70,000 each I think. And um, I cut loose, went car camping, and um, I've basically been travelling on and off ever since. So, um, what now? 
I haven't worked for over four years. Um, I'm living with my mum. I'm still young, healthy, no debt, no financial obligations, no dependents. So whatever freedom means, I, I still have it right now. Um, but, you know, I've had a business, I've had a marriage, I've had a house, I've travelled the world. So no, I'm struggling for real. I don't have any specific motivation um, right now. I was watching this YouTube video recently, some survival show in, I think it was Vietnam, and they were talking to this guy who was hunting rats to sell at the market because he needed the money to um, buy medicine for his sick wife. And I just thought, that's an example of just a singular purpose. It's so clear and it avoids all these, all other questions. Um, even if it involves, you know, hunting sewer rats, um, at least it gives you that clear direction. But um, what happens to people when all those afflictions are removed? I guess I'm finding out. So I subscribe to this big YouTube channel called uh, My Self Reliance, where the guy is building all these off-grid cabins and structures and things for an off-grid life. And I've been following him for about four years and he's just constantly building things. And um, he doesn't want to sit in front of the fire with his dog and enjoy the good life. He's more comfortable building, building, and I think that's something in the male mindset of just constantly building towards something, and that's, it makes you feel a bit more comfortable. Um, the urge to get something done, like I feel this restless, restlessness at the moment, being at home, like, oh, maybe I'll go on a trip somewhere, maybe I'll do something, and um, like, I like travelling, but Am I just seeking constant novelty for the sake of it? Just change for its own sake? Um, it depends how you frame these things. And I guess it differs from person to person. Um, so I don't know. Um, but I think a lot of, yeah, a lot of this, like if you see a friend who needs, who wakes up and goes on dating apps or smokes or drinks you think that that's you know compulsive behavior but when it's wrapped up in productivity even though it's the kind of same mindset I think just the urge to do something to escape to get something done um, like I don't really like sitting around on my own I'll go out for a run go for a walk cook something and um, I like the feeling of just physical exhaustion and um, you could say it's insecurity, the fact that I can't um, sit still very easily. Or you could say I have a healthy lifestyle, I don't know. But um, I do fall into kind of hours of mindless consumption sometimes. Um, even though I try and fill my days with kind of stuff I enjoy, there's just... I've got a lot of time, so I guess, is that a call to action or should I just try and sit with it and and um, be more calm and present in my own company? Um, but I am, I am doing well. I spend a lot of time outside, enjoy walking, running. Um, I'm learning Turkish in the mornings, um, looking after dogs playing golf, so doing a lot of what I enjoy, um, but I feel like sometimes I'm just sitting around waiting for something to happen in my life. But my perspective on these things changes from day to day. Sometimes I feel very content and sometimes I don't, so I kind of just accept that.
So I do struggle with relationships at the moment. Um, I don't like dating, really. I don't like entertainment. Um, I prefer to be on my own a lot of the time. Um, I do like living with someone. Um, my previous relationship with Regine, where we were just living together, the cats were there. She was often just doing her own thing, just having that presence there. Um, it was like a marriage where we just talk about the cats as a proxy for our children. But um, I never really liked going on holiday together. Those things are kind of an act of service for me. Um, so that's probably a sign that I'm not really meant for a relationship right now. Um, like I like going out for walks, but I'd probably prefer to do that on my own most of the time because I don't like the chit chat, someone will say, point something out, like, oh, seen that or did you hear about this? And it just becomes, I sometimes think language is just like a virus. It's infected our minds and replaced ordinary physical reality with this abstract conceptual analytical reality. And it's pervaded all aspects of our lives. So I wouldn't really recommend myself to someone um, right now so um, and obviously having kids does solve a lot of the problems I've been discussing today albeit being replaced by a load of other problems um, and the amount of purchasing required to get a child to independence as well and having your free time geared towards entertainment having to go to places like the zoo but um, I don't really know what a viable alternative for me is. A life alone. There is something magical about a long-term relationship and a family and there's this perpetual motion where everything's kind of out of control. Um, being single opens up a world in front of me and um, it's a bit daunting sometimes. But... Um, I really don't overthink these things. If if anyone knew what they were getting themselves in for in a relationship or a business or anything, they probably wouldn't do it. And um, I try just not to invest in my own storyline too much. But again, this does um, go in a, a loop sometimes throughout the day. So um, that's why this video has taken so long to record. I'm feeling good. And I read these things, I'm like, ah, oh, I don't feel like that. And then when, if I'm not feeling good, I won't make the video, so. So it would be disingenuous of me not to mention my numinous experiences, most notably with psilocybin, the magic mushroom, um, which is a psychedelic psychoactive substance once ingested can um, thrust you into a strange trip of alien beauty and wonder. And um, I've taken magic mushrooms maybe a dozen times or so over the last 15 years. And I've experienced some incredibly profound things in that time. Um, but it's very difficult to describe what is essentially by its nature indescribable. People like Aldous Huxley in the 60s have tried and I'm gonna do no better job than them. But um, one experience in particular will always stand out to me, and that is the time I got to experience God. And um, I'd had quite a large, but not heroic dose of magic mushrooms in my flat in London. And um, it was a mushroom night like any other really, each extraordinary in its own way. But um, 
I'd inhaled a balloon of nitrous oxide, which is, um, in ordinary circumstances, is like a benign anaesthetic, um, which manifests as this like unconsciousness pretty much. But when your consciousness is augmented by this psychoactive substance, you're you're blasted into further realms of. This time I was there, pure enlightenment, the synesthesia of love, beauty and understanding. And um, it can never be explained conceptually, unfortunately. Even if I try and remember or imagine it now, it, it's, um, it's not how I picture it. Because that's the, that's the nature of it, as I said, real truth. Real truth can, can't be um, explained, described or understood. It can only be beheld. It's a living truth. Um, so if I can't remember it or describe it, why would I say I've seen God? As I've mentioned, I've, um, I haven't talked this much in a while. So as I mentioned, I am, I've seen some extraordinary things in these spaces. I recently came across a diary entry of one of my past trips, which said, multicolored rising animatronic squid serpent spinning and creating rising terraces of bejeweled alien tapestries, images and symbols unfolding and changing so quickly. I had to turn away, it was too much to handle. Because these things are unfolding quicker than the perception can tolerate sometimes. And um, how far you go in these spaces is often limited only by your capacity for awe and wonder. And um, it's easy to pay lip service to wonder, you know, yeah, bring as much wonder as you can, as you can get basically, but what you're being shown is overwhelming, perceptively and emotionally. You just sometimes have to turn away and just look at something normal, try and just get out of it because it's just too much. But it makes me realise how much more profound and deep existence is than we normally appreciate. <clears throat> however, un however jarring and unsettling the experience might be. Um, but my gen I'm going to have a break, I think, because I'm getting a bit raspy. My general reaction to these things is like, whoa, oh my God, like shock. Um, but the reaction, but the time I'm talking about now, I was completely overwhelmed I was on my knees crying and wailing like oh my god oh my god <sighs> like just that times 10 um I just couldn't believe it even you know quite a long time after I was just oh my god just completely overcome and that is one of the hallmarks of true revelation it's an emotional experience and even if it even as it was fading i was saying to myself i get it i get it i get it and um i couldn't remember what it was that i understood i couldn't reduce it to a phrase and um i knew that i knew but i didn't know what it was that i knew and um, that's the nature of the great cosmic giggle. You can be confronted with absolute truth, pure enlightenment, the ultimate state of being, and it's so simple, um, so glorious, and then it's just gone, and you just get back to normality. And um, all I had later was just this faint echo. I really wanted to tell people about it, but... I had nothing to say. Um, so again, if that is the case, why do I say I saw God? Why use this word? Well, the fact is it's self-evident. 
that it was God, it might be the only thing in existence that is self-evident. Um, it wasn't ambiguous, it left no room for doubt or uncertainty. Um, Fear, worry, doubt, these things arise in the absence of true understanding and um, they have no seat at the table of divine truth, ultimately. And um, in these spaces, you're not intoxic intoxicated or inebriated, really, even though I may look like this. Um, there's a clear point of perception and discernment that's um, not affected. In fact, it's functioning at an even higher level than normal. And um, something happens with music as well. It's elevated to extraordinary heights where you get this synesthesia of visuals and, um, and the music and emotions as well. The music we have normally in comparison is just watery soup really compared with the real thing so um even though i don't remember the contents of this particular experience i remember its emotional impact on me and i do i do still have a thread of faith linking me to that experience and um I can say beyond all doubt that um, God is real, God is good, very good, the best thing ever. Um, but so what What happens next? Um, after an experience like that, it's hard to go back to life, back to work at the cracker factory. Um, absorbed in the moment, I realised that everything's changed forever. Um, everything I know about existence is, is changed and it's so poignant. Um, I think a lot of the virtues needed for psychedelic adventures are good spiritual values. You need courage, humility, uh, you need to surrender control to confront your own delusions about life. Submit to a higher power and faith that you'll pull through and um, yeah, to humble yourself, to kneel at the foot of the mystery and be shown how little you do know. So no wonder psychonauts so often get a glimpse of God and um, no wonder there's so little uptake in society at large. If these things were freely available on the NHS or Deliveroo still wouldn't get many takers. You might get the dabblers, people doing mushroom supplements and mushroom tea, um, microdosing, happier we to smell the hors d'oeuvres at the banquet of divine glory. Um, but there was nothing to be done, really. So, um, I went back to work on Monday and um, life carried on as normal, I think. So a few more points to wrap up here. Um, when I started my food business, um, my life, well, my life really depended on its success. Um, so I was waking up five in the morning, preparing dishes, driving around Surrey, looking for the best ingredients. So against these chain restaurants with work, with like chefs on hourly wages, I was always going to be a success. But. Um, you can't really manufacture that desperation. And um, I don't know if that commitment will ever return to me. Um, so at this moment, I'm conflicted. 
I would like to take on some responsibility in life, but then again, I do enjoy my life at the moment, doing what I like, spending time outdoors. Um, but then again, you don't need to be unemployed to enjoy walking. So um, I would like to do something more meaningful, but maybe there's no real inherent meaning or purpose to anything in life. Things can be simultaneously meaningful and trivial. It's one of life's paradoxes. What claims to be the most sacred in life is often the most silly. And what appears to be the most silly is often the most sacred. Um, I am battling the urge to um, fill space with junk food, junk TV, consumption. This is a battle I'm struggling with. The battle against compulsive action. Um, it's an internal battle. and um, But I think everyone has these little collection of troubles and conflicts at the back of their mind. Health, work, relationships, finances. Um, and it seems deeply personal to us um, and sometimes it can seem all consuming. Um, but then one day for all of us, something will happen, an event, we might get a phone call and um, something important will happen and our world will be turned upside down and um, suddenly every waking moment will be consumed by a new reality and we'll wonder what we even thought about before. Um, it's so easy to take for granted the health of ourselves and those we love um, but suddenly activities which seemed trivial or even inconvenient in the past will now be so precious to us and um, we'll look back at, with a kind of tragic nostalgia about those little concerns we had in the past which would manage to inflate so much um, but life is a game of perspective and um, it's hard to live with these facts, unfortunately. We often need drastic reminders. But the great solace of life is also its great tragedy. There's nothing to worry about. There never has been and never will be. It's all, it's all made up. So that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.